Hey guys, it's Chats, and in today's video, I'm going to discuss everything you need to know about investing from things like index funds, stocks, and cryptocurrencies. I'll be sharing the benefits of investing, when to consider investing, and how you can get started just like me. I mean, a year ago, I knew nothing about investing and lost a lot of money, but now I've been dabbling around it for a year. I have much clear understanding of how things work and wish I knew this before I started. Make sure you stick around till the end as I've ordered the safest investing options from the lowest to the highest risk where there are higher gains. Now the big question most people have is why should you start investing? We all want to gain financial freedom. Some want to have a peaceful retirement enjoying a cold breeze at the beach while some want to have enough money to live a lavish lifestyle. In order to gain financial freedom, it is said that you cannot become free if you're constantly using your time for money. Neither will your savings do you any justice. You need to make your money work for you or else it will become useless due to something called inflation. You may or may be not aware, but every year your money loses its value due to everything else becoming expensive. I mean, take this can of Coke for example. I used to pay 50p for one can, but now it costs 69p per can. See the effects of inflation? Now this is just a small example compared to the bigger picture but you get the idea. On average inflation rises by 2% a year but banks give you an interest of less than 1% on your savings therefore you're always losing money overall. Now on the other hand if you had invested your money in an index fund you could have got an average return of 10% over the years. So now the question is is it really worth having your money saved up in a bank or to invest to gain far more financial growth? definitely not to save it up. So let me introduce you to the lowest risk option, index funds. Now you may be wondering, what is an index fund? Well, let me break it down for you. An index fund is simply a fund, a collection of money from people put in a big pot then invested into the big indexes like the S&P 500. The S&P 500 and other major indices are built up of big corporations depending on their percentages as shown on the chart. Now the fund simply invest the money on the percentage of how the indices is built. Let's say there's a fund worth of £100 and it is invested into the S&P 500. As you can see, Apple here is worth 6.9% of the whole S&P 500. So the fund will buy 6.9% which is £6.90 worth of Apple stock. Now it will do the same for all the other companies which make up the S&P 500. Now I hope this makes it much clear on what an index fund is. If you still don't understand it, don't worry, I'll go more in detail in coming videos. Now you don't have to invest in the S&P 500. There are many other indexes such as the FTSE 100 or the Nasdaq Composite. The best thing about an index fund is that it is passive investment, just like a pension scheme. You don't have to look at it constantly and day trade. All you do is keep feeding the fund and over time, it will give you high gains. I mean, look at the stats. Yes, the market has gone down a bit, but has always led to higher gains in return. The reason being is that it relies on 500 companies. If one or two go down, there are still 498 companies that will balance out your returns. Now, psychology plays a huge part in investing as you need to ride the wave when the market goes up and down. And this is why I love index funds as personally, I'm not so good psychologically. I can simply put in my money monthly and let the fund work for me. While we're at it here, here's a fun fact. I'm just 22 and if I started putting £100 into the S&P 500 with a return of 10% a year, by the time I'm 67, I should have made over a million pounds in passive income. Now, if I just waited a few more years and started when I was 30, I would get a return of only 400,000 pounds. Now, look at the difference. I would lose out on so much money and this is why you should start investing as early as possible. Here are a few platforms you can look into to start investing into index funds. If you're from the UK, I would recommend Vanguard as this is the one I use and it's really safe. My pro tip here would be just choose a fund that has a low brokerage fee so you don't get ripped off. For my US people, I would recommend Fidelity Investment, but as I mentioned, just make sure you choose a fund that has a low brokerage fee. And for my young audience, don't worry, you can also join in on the action. All you have to do is get a custodial account in the US and a junior stocks and share ISA if you're in the UK with the permission of your parents and you should be good to go. Let's move on to the second investing option, which is through stocks. This is slightly more riskier than index funds. Let's say you believe in Apple and think by the end of 2023, the company is going to do so well in terms of financial gains then you can simply buy a stock for Apple. This means you're essentially owning a part of the company. So you can pretty much say, I own Apple. Now, if Apple does so good, you will gain high returns. Whereas if Apple goes down, so that's the price of the share you bought into. Now, this is where it's more riskier to invest in rather than an index fund, as you're relying on a single company. If the company goes bankrupt, you will lose all your money. However, on the flip side, if the company does so good, you'll make more gains as your money is invested in one company rather than many. 
Another benefit of investing in single stock is that you can get paid dividends each year. Let's say Apple does good this year and sells many phones and make millions this year. They can choose to share the millions among shareholders equally, allowing you to gain some extra money. The reason why big companies like Apple and Microsoft do this is that they can attract more investors to invest in them. Not only that, they try and promote long-term holdings as there are two types of stock traders. One being long-term passive holder, which companies love, another called day trader, where throughout the days, they simply buy and sell stocks causing the market to go up and down. There are many ways you can buy a stock. You simply need to create a brokerage account for the UK. You can simply go to sites like Trading212 or eToro to make an account. And for the US, you can simply go to Fidelity Investments or Public. Once you're in there, you can simply deposit some money in and buy stocks for any companies you like. Obviously, do not blindly buy stocks. Make sure you carry out technical and fundamental analysis of each company you wanna invest in. Now, if you have no idea what these two words mean, Technical analysis is when you look at the stock chart to see how well the company is doing, if it's going up or down, commonly used by day traders. As for them, markets may move a lot within a day, whereas fundamental analysis is when you look at a company report, news and balance sheets to see how well the company is performing and what the future looks like for the company. This analysis method is used by both type of traders, day and passive holders, but it suits passive holders more as they only care about long-term gain. However, don't get me wrong, both analysis methods are important and should be used by everyone regardless of what type of investor you are. They share key information you need before investing into stocks. Once you start investing in stocks, it is important you start diversifying your portfolio. Look to buy in different stocks in different markets, as if a certain sector is doing bad, you can cover them from other sectors that are doing great. Finally, let's talk about the most spoken topic in 2022, cryptocurrencies. This is a high risk, but at the same time, high rewarding investing option. For those of you that don't know what a cryptocurrency is, it is basically a digital currency, just like we have pounds and dollars, but they are all locked in the blockchain. Now, some of you must be saying, what are you saying? Some cryptos like Bitcoin and Ethereum are low risk. I disagree, as they're very, very volatile at the moment due to uncertainty around them. <laughs> Although I believe they have a key part to play in the coming years, but it's still too early and that's the main reason why it's risky. Yet finally, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the safest option in the crypto world as there are many dodgy coins being made on daily basis in the crypto world. I mean, they're so easy to set up. Check out this video by Piheza who made a fluff coin and within a day, it reached over $4 million in market cap. The people who invested got lucky as if he decided to pull out, he could have taken all the money and fled. Now, not everyone is lucky. I'm sure you've heard of the Squid Game token where they pumped the coin to $3 million and within a second, it went to zero as the creators pulled out all the money. Now, the people who invested lost all their money. These scams have happened countless times. People simply start making Discord communities and hype up a coin and start a pump and dump scheme. This is why I would highly recommend you stay away from such investments as in my eyes, I don't even see them as investments. But if you wanna take some risk, go ahead, just make sure you use the money you can afford to lose. My best tip I would give you is buy and sell straight away and keep recycling the money, but any projects you invest in, never forget to carry out extensive research on the project just to see they're legit and have some type of value before you invest in them. If you do wanna invest in cryptocurrencies, then you can sign up to a platform like crypto.com. If you click the link in the description, you'll get 25 pounds just to sign up. Once you're in, you can simply select the currency you want to buy. But like I said, make sure you do your research before investing in any coins. Now, before you even think about investing, here's a checklist you need to complete before you start investing. And there are a few important things you need to consider. Number one, you need to make sure you have an emergency fund before you start investing. Sounds a bit scary, emergency fund. I know, but it's rather simple. You need to have some money around just in case an emergency arises and you need the money immediately. It is recommended you have at least six to one year's worth of living expenses in cash ready to use just in case you ever lose your job or a medical emergency arises. The second thing you need to consider is paying off all your debt you may have. Now this is because all your debt has high interest on it. Therefore, let's say you are making some returns on your investment. Your debt interest will be cutting those investment returns down. So it's most definitely advised to get rid of any debts as soon as possible. And lastly, it is important you do not invest any money you will need in the next three to five years. This could be for a marriage or even a down payment on the house you're planning to buy. This is because investing is still risky. No one can predict what will happen. The market can even crash tomorrow. I mean, look how down the market is at the moment. Once you have done these three important things, then it is best you start investing straight away. The more you wait, 
the more you will lose on potential gains. Here's a little bonus for you new investors. Psychology plays a huge part in investing. If you're a very impulsive and impatient person, then I suggest you take long-term passive investing options instead of dabbling into day trading, where you are constantly battling with the urge of buying and selling as soon as you see some action in the market. Most people lose money due to this reason as they're not able to figure out what type of trader they are. There's no shame in being a passive trader as you would rather make money in the long run than lose money in the short term. Now, if you still have the determination to get involved in day trading, then I would highly recommend you read some of my favorite books that has helped me to grow a stronger mind when it comes to trading. The books are The Disciplined Trader, Developing Winning Attitudes and Thinking Fast and Slow. So those were the different type of investment options you could start as a beginner, depending on how much risk you're willing to take. I personally would recommend the low risk options as this is a long run game. If you have no money lying around to start investing and you need some money, then you can watch this video where I'll share seven online jobs which you can start today and start making some money. And also if you want me to go in detail for each of the investing options, then let me know in the comments and I'll make a video for you. However, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.